In this video, we're going to be talking about the squeeze theorem. So this is not super common, like these kinds of problems are not super common, just because the squeeze theorem is a little bit complicated to apply, but they are still out there. So I'm going to introduce you to how to really solve some of those questions and walk you through kind of the logic that we're going, that we go through with those, just so you have a framework. So in case you ever see one of those, uh, you're well equipped to solve them, All right? So let's go right into it. All right, so here's our first example. We've only got two in this video, uh, but let's see what we can do. So as you'll notice, this doesn't really fit into any of the strategy, strategies we've covered in the last two videos. Right? It's not a zero over zero limit because the limit is x goes to infinity if cosine of x is, is undefined and the limit is x goes to infinity if x squared is infinity. Um, and it doesn't really work with any of our infinite limit strategies because right? nothing really cancels out. There's no exponential function. So we don't really know what to do with the cosine of x um, as x goes to infinity. Right? So it doesn't really work with anything else. So we're going to need to use the squeeze theorem. Right? And the squeeze theorem problems you're likely to see nearly always will involve uh, trig functions, right? Just the way, because trig functions work kind of nicely for this, right? Cool. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a fact, right? We're going to say that cosine of x, right? Cosine of x is always between negative 1 and 1. And this right here is just a fact, right? It's a property of the cosine function. It's just a fact, right? There's no, there's, it's just a, it's just the way the graph is defined, right? The range of cosine is negative one to one, right? Cool. Given this, what we can do now is we want to solve something to do with this, right? Cosine of x over x squared, right? So to try and get to this, let's divide everything by x squared. Right? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to divide everything in this inequality by x squared. So we have negative 1 over x squared. So we're equal to, we have cosine of x over x squared. And we have 1 over x squared. Okay. So I started with this fact, divided everything by x squared. And now I have this cosine of x over x squared, which is the thing I really want to investigate here with this limit. Okay. So now that I've got this, I can go ahead and take my limit as x goes to infinity, right? And when I take this limit, it's going to be for each of these terms. So that's going to look like this. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 1 over x squared. We do this. We have the limit as x approaches infinity 1 over x squared. And in the middle here, we have the real limit that we're really interested in. That is the limit as x approaches infinity of cosine of x over x squared. Okay? Wonderful. Now, let's ignore this, this blue limit here for a second. Let's look at the ones on the sides and see if we can make any sense of those. Because right? we don't really know how to solve this one using any of our regular limit techniques, but these two look a lot nicer. This guy right here is just going to go to zero, right? Because remember, we have a constant over a change in quantity. Limit as x goes to infinity is going to be zero. Same thing over here, one over x squared. Limit as x goes to infinity is going to be zero, right? So what we're left with when the cows come home here is we're going to have, um, we'll have the limit as x goes to infinity of cosine of x over x squared, this guy is less than or equal to, it's greater than or equal to zero, and also less than or equal to zero, right? because that's what the, both these limits ended up evaluating to. This is a, given this inequality, there's only one thing that this limit can be, right, for this inequality to be true, and that is this thing has to equal zero, right? For this inequality to hold, that has to equal zero. So ergo, by this logic, we must conclude that the limit as x approaches infinity of cosine of x over x squared equals zero, right? And this is how the squeeze theorem really works. We've kind of basically what we've done here is we've suffocated this limit or squeezed it between these two bounds, right? Between zero and zero effectively, so it gave us that answer. By, by starting here and then forcing it 
just to, to fit between these two bounds here, we've got our answer there. Right? So that's how the whole idea of how the squeeze theorem really works. Okay? Let's do one more example just to really nail this home. All right, so now we have the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the sine of x or x cubed. Like last time, none of our limit strategies really apply. But once again, since we have that trig function, we have that sine of x up there, we might be in for a, a squeeze theorem limit. So we're going to start once again with that same kind of definition that we started the previous uh, problem with. And we're going to say that sine of x is in between 1 and negative 1. Right? That's also, once again, this right here is just a fact. Right? There's just a property of sine of x. Both sine of x and cosine of x are between negative 1 and 1. Okay? Awesome. Got that. And now, once again, our goal is to try and make this middle term here look like what we've got here. Right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to raise everything with a base e. Right? So that that's going to look like this. So we'll have e to the negative 1 is less than or equal to e to the sine of x, which is less than or equal to e to the first. Okay? We've got that. Now we just divide everything by x cubed to make that middle term exactly like that. So we're going to have e to the negative 1 over x cubed is less than or equal to e to the sine of x over x cubed is less than or equal to e to the first over x cubed. Okay? Wonderful. And now we are ready to take our limit as x goes to infinity. And so if we come over here, we can now take the limit as x goes to infinity of each of those pieces. e to the negative 1 over x cubed. So let's leave some space for the middle term there. So now we have the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the first x cubed, which is just e by the way. And then in the middle there we have this guy here. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the sine of x over x cubed. Okay? Wonderful. And now we can go ahead and take our limits. Right? So this guy right here is going to go to 0. By the way, don't be, don't be thrown off by this e to the negative 1. It's just a constant and the same rule applies. So this limit's going to go to 0. That limit's going to go to 0. So when the cows come home, what we're left with is we have set up our bounds there. We have limit as x approaches infinity e to the sine of x for x cubed. And that's stuffed between 0 and 0. right? So once again, the only thing this limit could equal that would make this inequality hold up would be 0. So this limit would have to equal 0. Right? So therefore, we can reach the conclusion that the limit so x approaches infinity of e to the sine of x over x cubed must equal 0. Okay? Wonderful. And that's how you do these, right? So there are more complicated applications of this which are not as straightforward, which is why squeeze theorem limits are not super common. But this is kind of the, the idea of how they work and how the squeeze theorem really works, right? This is the whole premise of the squeeze theorem. Like, if you can show that this um, that this limit right is stuck between two functions for any value of x and that those two functions approach the same thing right as we showed here then this middle function can also be shown to, appro to approach that right and that's the whole premise of the squeeze theorem and that's how you'd set up these questions so yeah uh, please leave me any comments uh, if you can let me know how these videos are going for you um, so i can improve them to make them better for you or uh, do some things more that you might like uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out some other videos. See you next time!